Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I wanted to go through a slightly controversial subject, but it's something that I've looked into a lot recently, and that is the effects of plants and how having plants in our diets, which most of us do and most of us think is really healthy for us, can actually be detrimental to us those of us who suffer with autoimmune conditions like MS. So yeah, let's jump straight into this topic. And before we do, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos about health and my journey with MS. Sometimes I feel like I'm losing my touch With all the highs and lows I feel myself In the void between my dreams So yeah, this whole movement of plants are the enemy, um, I first came across it about a year ago where I started hearing about this carnivore diet. Um, and it's become popularised in, in culture because of, thanks to podcasts like the Joe Rogan podcast where he talked about it. Um, and then there's quite a lot of YouTubers nowadays that promote a carnivore diet, especially for those of us with autoimmune conditions. So to me at the time, this sounded crazy because I've always been of the theory that, you know, we need to be eating a lot of vegetables. We need to be getting all of our minerals, getting lots of fiber in our diet. Um, so initially, I completely just threw it to one side and thought there's no way that this can be healthy for us. But as time's gone by, I've seen more and more videos. I've heard from the likes of Paul Saladino, who... Um, speaks really eloquently and really factually and he knows his stuff and he talks about the real benefits of eating a carnivore or meat-based diet as opposed to a plant-based diet or a mixed diet which is what I currently and what I'm guessing 99% of you do um, and over time it's really kind of won me over in some respects so that I'm actually contemplating giving it a try for a month. So the theory behind this is based off the fact that both animals and plants don't want to get eaten by us, you. Um, and so animals, what their defense mechanism against us is, they run away. You know, they've got sharp claws, they've got sharp teeth. So in the wild, they'd be able to fight their way out of losing a battle with us so they wouldn't get eaten. Plants, on the other hand, they can't move. They're stuck in the ground. And so what they do is they build into themselves defense chemicals that essentially poison um, animals that are likely going to eat them so they will be deterred from eating them and won't eat them going forward. And so it's all to do with all these defense chemicals that are built into plants, which is the reason why and the argument for a carnivore diet as opposed to a plant-based one. Because when you actually look at it, there's actually so many defense chemicals within plants that are highly toxic to humans. And it might just be so the case that because we consume it all the time, we've built up some sort of a resistance to it. But the fact remains that we're still ingesting these uh, defense chemicals that can cause immune reactions and therefore lead to autoimmune reactions further down the line. Um, because they can also cause leaky gut, which is obviously the process that um, toxins from your food get into your bloodstream and then your immune system goes crazy and then starts creating loads of immune cells to react against it which can lead to autoimmune conditions as well. So it kind of creates this storm, that's the theory behind it anyway, this storm of these defense chemicals causing damage to our system and our normal equilibrium which then leads to further autoimmunity. So the most well known of these plants defense chemicals is probably called lectins. Now you may or may not have heard of them but you'll definitely have heard of one lectin um, because one of the main lectins in wheat is gluten. And obviously a lot of us know that gluten is not very good for our health and because um, you know there's a lot of people with strong sensitivities, people with celiac disease, my sister's got celiac, um, and it's well known that it can cause disruptions in the gut and a leaky gut which can lead to autoimmunity. Now there's not just gluten, so gluten is just one lectin, there's lectins in a variety of plants and vegetables in particular. The highest concentration of lectins are found mainly in nightshade vegetables, so things like tomatoes, peppers, chilies, vegetables like that really and especially in the seeds and in the skin because that's where the plant really wants to protect itself. It wants to protect its seeds so that it can pass on its DNA to the next generation and it also wants to protect the outside, protecting everything that's within. That's one of the, the main defense chemicals and the most well-known ones and our ancestors have known this for generations and they used to eat plants like peppers and like tomatoes and they used to prepare them and they'd ferment them so that they could get rid of these lectins. Um, because we know that now that one of the ways of removing these lectins is to remove the seeds. So for example, tomatoes, 
throughout our history, um, people would remove the seeds and they would de-skin tomatoes. Whereas nowadays, in our fast-moving environment, obviously tomatoes just all get chucked in the pan and whatever it is, maybe it's, we're buying chopped tomatoes, they always get chopped up and put together and you're getting all of those lectins and you're getting a really strong high load of it. And so that's why a lot of autoimmune diets remove nightshade vegetables along with other high lectin vegetables because they can disrupt um, and cause damage to us humans. One well-known doctor on the internet who talks about the danger of lectins is called Dr. Gundry, and I'll link down below his channel, but he goes extensively and he thinks that you should cut out every single vegetable that contains lectins across the board. So that includes things like almonds, it includes gluten-free oats, all sorts that should be removed from the diet if you've got an autoimmune condition, in his opinion. Then on top of lectins, you've got chemicals like oxalates. They're found in things like spinach um, and a lot of other leafy green vegetables, and they can cause damage to us as humans. You've also got phytotoxins. The more you look into it, the more you realize that plants are out to kill us. They're not there to be eaten. They don't want to be eaten, and so the way they do it is they're, they're nature's chemists. That's what they're good at and that's what they do. They build in these chemicals to cause damage to us as humans. And so all of this is why most elimination style diets, they remove a lot of vegetables and plant material first and then you then reintroduce them and see what's reacting with you. There'll be some people who are more sensitive to certain plant toxins and some people will be more susceptible to other ones. Um, and so it's all about finding out what's best for you. But people who support a carnivore or a meat-based diet just say that, look, plants are full of these harmful toxins that are not good for humans. So let's just, let's not try and pick and choose and try and have this thing here and have these vegetables because if they're, if they're steam cooked or whatever it might be, let's just remove them all and we'll be much healthier for it. And a lot of people have cured autoimmune conditions by going on a carnivore diet, which is what really piqued my interest. Um, because you might have heard of Michaela Peterson, who's Jordan Peterson's daughter. Um, Jordan Peterson went on the Joe Rogan podcast actually and spoke about his autoimmune conditions. Um, and his family have actually been riddled with them throughout the generations. And so him and also his daughter have been affected really badly throughout their lives. And recently, over the past two or three years or so, I, I think, they've gone on a carnivore diet and they've managed to eliminate a lot, if not all, of their problems. And that included severe rheumatoid arthritis, it included psoriasis, and so it was kind of a wide spectrum of autoimmune diseases. And the more you look into it, you more, the more you find stories similar to this that have cured um, a lot of autoimmune conditions just by doing this diet and making sure you get in the healthy uh, organ meats and you're getting good sources of these proteins as well. Like I was skeptical at the start, you might be thinking, but how do I get my vitamins in? How do I get my, my nutrients, my fiber? Um, and the answer to that is that a lot of the, well, all the essential amino acids, for example, can only be found in meat. You can't get them all from plants. Um, and similarly with the, the vitamins and the nutrients, you can get all of them from meats because the biodiversity of nutrients is much higher in availability in meats than it is in plants because plants have these defense mechanisms and these anti-nutrients that actually block the body from absorbing a lot of the vital nutrients. And so you can actually, when you look into it, you actually realize that meat is actually a lot higher in a lot of nutrients than some of the really big superfoods that we thought were really healthy like kale, broccoli and spinach. Um, and so you can actually get everything that you need from a carnivore based diet. Now, a lot of people on this diet do introduce fruits on the side because fruits are essentially the part of a plant that they want you to eat because they're usually used there as a sweet treat for animals to come and eat so they don't eat the actual vital part of the plant themselves. So the roots, the seeds, however they pass on. And a lot of fruits as well are designed to actually spread their seeds um, so that you know animals will eat them and then they'll move around and exit out through the digestive system and then that'll be how they replant themselves in a different place. So there are a lot of options in terms of how strict you want to be but there is a lot of overwhelming now um, information coming out that a diet like this can be beneficial for people like us with autoimmune conditions and so it's I've found enough information out that it's piqued my interest and I'm considering giving it a go um, in January just for the month and seeing how I feel so I thought I'd share it with you guys and I'd love to find out if any of you have tried it in the past at all um, have any of you watched any other youtubers that talk about the carnival diet and its benefits 
Um, I'd love to hear from you and yeah, do let me know if you've tried it before, if you've had any benefits before and also if you've tried any other diets that have really worked for you as well in the long run because I'd love to find out. So yeah, thanks for watching today's video. Please do hit that like and subscribe and as I say, get involved in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video. Sometimes I feel like I'm losing my touch With all the highs and lows I feel myself